So are you ready to get triggered? That message doesn't go out to everyone, but it goes out to a very specific demographic of moviegoers, which I'm going to identify as the Barbie bashers. And what I mean by that is, if you are one of the people, specifically a man, and I'm not firing shots here, don't get me wrong, there are some jokes in the Barbie movie that stung me, <laughs> but ultimately they're jokes, and it was just a movie. But if you're, respectfully, one of the people who was so easily offended by a doll movie that you had to stand up on your soapbox and say that it's woke, that it that down with this feminazism, yada, yada, yada. All of those silly sound bites that a very specific corner of the internet speaks. If you're one of those, ooh, respectfully, this movie's not for you. But that doesn't mean I'm not. I review all the plethora of movies. Please do subscribe to the channel and then we can review and talk about other movies in the comment section when I get to watching another movie. But I'm, I'm warning you, not out of some sort of condescension or like, you're a terrible person. Each of us have our own strokes in life. But I'm, just, I'm warning you. <laughs> like, if Barbie offended you, this is not for you, buddy. <laughs> this one is really not for you. So with all that said... Tell that to the Winter Tale. Tell that to the Winter Sea, rather. The Winter Tale. Tell that to the Winter Sea is about two young friends, Josephine and Scarlet. And we find out through a bit of flashback exposition, briefly throughout the movie, that they had a very subtle, nuanced, beautiful, almost like a lost in translation, quiet, but very, very powerful romance when they were young girls the majority of the movie is actually set 12 years as 12 years after their romance and we come to a point where it seems to be a, it seems to be a hindu josephine's getting married everyone's celebrating and scarlet is just taken aback by the type of person josephine's become and there's there's all of these kind of prodding prodding comments she makes about how oh you didn't used to be like that or why is it you're reliant on this person to help you out or you know that w without being too harsh on her and without holding a mirror up too obviously to her there's a very clear undertone and implication of you've kind of given away what made you you and you've become a bit subservient all for the sake of having an easier come for your life and you can tell Scarlet's visibly surprised, not disgusted, but like surprised by that. And that kind of uncomfortable, unspoken, but very, very obvious, in, in obvious in terms of its insinuation, obvious dialogue exchange is what permeates the movie and actually kind of what makes it great. Like the, the scenes which are meant to make you uncomfortable Wow, wow, they're effective in making you uncomfortable. Case in point, there's a dinner scene with all of them sitting around. And you're finding out that... What, you find out previously in the movie that Josephine and Scarlett were kind of like these two really, really prominent, aspiring ballet dancers. And where Josephine seems to have had success, Scarlett didn't. And we'll come back to that in a moment. But Scarlett has become a teacher, which, not heading teachers here, but she's a teacher who teaches movement and who teaches stretching, which is kind of a weird thing to teach, as the movie implies. And then one of the girls tries to have her back and says, oh, listen, you know, young kids, that's very important for them to learn uh, motion and freedom of movement. And then Scarlett drops the bomb and is like, I teach 13-year-olds and up. It's like, oh, you teach 13-year-olds stretching and the, and it lingers in that awkward silence and you as an audience member feel super uncomfortable as a result for it as a result of it and that's where the movie is just so damn powerful it lingers on the moments intentionally it makes you feel uncomfortable and conversely the flashbacks of when these two girls are together that's when it goes full lost in translation because it is genuinely quite beautiful and it's never in your face it never chooses to go down the route of show you everything it's definitely implied but 
you're almost left that it's almost like the mind's eye is left to fill in the blanks and you it's not left to interpretation but left to well yeah actually yeah left to interpretation about just what lengths of love these two went to um and it, it that's the power of this is this very very obvious and yet somehow also subtle love story this this unspoken friendship that became a love story and the way that they fell apart and the way that they've clearly got a lot of baggage and have never really been able to reconcile that it, it's it's really quite brilliant when it's brilliant because as i said this movie's not it, it has its flaws three quarters of it is fantastic and it's when it's at its quietest and allowing the audience members to breathe in the atmosphere and it oozes nuance. That's when it's at its rip-roaring best. But for reasons beyond my understanding, which is so in direct contrast to that, the writers, one of whom is also the star, um, Bella Machina, uh, th they choose at these weird points in the movie to instead of being quiet almost start screaming feminist propaganda now i started this whole review by saying i am not one of the people who's going to be easily offended by something which is ultimately a movie about empowering oneself empowering feminism feminism at its core is an equality between the two genders what is there to disagree on in that but there are points where this movie dives so hard into what ultimately i kind of can't really label it more than man bashing um and it just seems so at odds with the nuance and the quietness and the kind of visual poetry of the rest of the movie that it, it almost lets itself down it's like well okay sure i the way that you frame these characters i can understand why the characters in moments of I guess happiness mania would potentially say that but equally I think you this is a, a comment going out to the writers um I think it almost betrays their subtle beautiful writing when they go full soapbox bashing like there's the there's the scene where they're gathered around the fire and they're ripping corners of a photograph up as uh you know they're having fun with it it's it's a hen party none of this is bad but one of the things that one girl says is i'll never be ashamed of masturbating and i'm like fantastic again i'm I'm providing not enough context here to understand the full scope of that comment but it it works and then the next girl comes along and says i will never allow a man to dictate who i am it's like sure why why go so and she really makes it quite venomous in its delivery and it's like I, I respect that. Why feel the need to write that in this moment? Um, it, it it just betrays the whole point of the movie, which where the movie is even more powerful is that there's no men in this movie. And that's not a bad thing. And again, if you're still here and you're one of those people who screams MCU instead of MCU, again, you're not going to like this film. There's no male characters in this movie. I think it's the better for that because ultimately it's a movie about femininity. It's a, it's a movie about women and about women's struggles and about women's journeys of love and about women's interpersonal relationships. It doesn't need men in it. It's not a story that is requiring of men to be anything other than background noise. In that sense, the movie works. And I'm like, but if you've gone down that route, why feel the need when this movie is ultimately at its core, not just about women, but about two women who shared an unspoken but very powerful love? Why feel the need to go down the route of man bashing when you when you when there's a kind of open window to do it? I actually have an interview with the director and the and, and the lead actress in the coming days on the channel. I think it's in next week, actually. So stay tuned to watch that. And I'm going to ask them that. I'm going to be like, listen, you did this, but why did you do that? So listen, if uh, hopefully they don't get offended by that. But I do need to ask that question. Um, maybe they'll educate me. Who knows? But for me, it really took me out the movie when they did that. Um, and 
Yeah, it, it, it really left a sour taste in my mouth because when they were going full, again, for lack of a better term, full lost in translation, I was like, yeah, this is great. This is, I, I'm involved. I love what's being told. I love the way that one of them's feeling betrayed and the other one's kind of lost her way. Despite the fact that I'm a man, I'm very much able to follow this very real, human, beautiful story. And another thing I have to commend it for, I have to say, is the way it's shot. It's kind of a weird mix between fly on the wall and looking through a keyhole. It's really quite accomplished. Every frame is quite highly exposed. It very much has an ethereal quality to it. And the actresses deliver stellar performances as both, you know, women of the now and portraying themselves 12 years younger so in all intents and purposes it's it's a success but i just can't help escape that feeling of why did you feel the need to go down the man bashing route so hard when the opportunity presented itself it just felt at odds with the rest of what was going on with the with the movie um and that feels almost bad but i almost feel one of no i'm not going to say it out of respect i'm not going to say it but look I enjoyed this movie, but I do think it let itself down with its soapbox standing in very small parts. But they were so prominent and so in stark contrast with the rest of the movie that ultimately I can't really score Tell That to the Wind to See anything more than six and a half out of ten. Had it just stuck to its guns, I think I'd probably be in about an eight out of ten here. But it really did sour the experience for me. Greta Bella Machina and Amber Anderson really do give brilliant, believable performances as the two leads. I really enjoyed it and I wanted to enjoy it more, but the movie let itself down and it's not a personal thing. And I really am going to look forward to asking the two writers, of which Greta Bella Machina is one of them, like what was what was the thinking behind that? Because listen, as a man, I'm open to the fact that there might be something that was going on there that I have not considered or may not be aware of. So all about the edutainment, but I do want to get an understanding of what it was. Um, so yeah, those are my thoughts on it. I'd love to know what you guys think. There's a subscribe button down here if movies are your jam and you want to support the channel. There's another video up here. Stay tuned because we've got that interviewing coming in the, uh, next week, I believe. We've got a little th another thing with OJ Borge coming up on BBC Radio too, so stay tuned for that. And yeah, a few little bits and bobs here and there, so keep it right here on the Silver Screen Dudes, and I'll see you guys very soon. Thank you for watching, guys. Bye for now.